Today I'm going to show you how to create this interesting procedural tech object. This object relies heavily on the Voronoi texture and then a gradient texture to sweep across and remove or put on those lights. So I'll show you how I did this. To set up our scene I'm going to get rid of this cube and bring in a plane. Change the entire left side to the shader editor and hit N to get rid of that shelf. I'm going to select that material that was on our cube and put it on our plane. Change the top right to the 3D viewport, scroll a little bit, and come in here to the render properties. We're going to select cycles and experimental, and if you have access to a GPU, select that as well. Under the modifiers panel, hit a subdivision surface and click adapt to subdivision and set the levels viewport at 6. Then come to the material properties and scroll down to where it says settings and where it says displacement. You change that from bump only to displacement only. And now we're all set to do some displacement. I'm also going to make this 3D viewport section just a little larger. The reason is because uh, with adaptive subdivision, I think it subdivides based on pixel size. So when this is really tiny, you really see very few subdivisions. It's not that clear what you're working on. Bring in a Voronoi, place it right here. I'm going to change this to Smooth F1 and Chevy Chev. Let's hit Control T while that's highlighted and make sure Object is going into that mapping node. We'll just move these over a little bit. Let's see what's happening. I'm going to move this principal BSDF out of the way and bring in a displacement node. Place it right here and we're going to run this into the height and then run this into the displacement. We can see it's uh, displacing our mesh there. I'm going to change some settings here. This is going to be scale of 2 and we'll set that smoothness at 0.05. There are a lot of different ways you can set this next part up. I'm just going to show you how I did it. I'm going to plug position into height. You can see that that's kind of made it a stepping pattern from the negative quadrant to the positive quadrant up here. I'm going to plug color into scale. And that kind of randomizes the height of these cells. I'm going to bring in a vector math node and place it on this position noodle. It's going into height on this displacement and plug the mapping output into the second socket of that add node. We can see it's made it a little bit more sloped. My next thought was I wanted to lessen the effect that uh, these displacements were having. So I'm going to put a multiply node on each of these. Uh, this top one, I'm going to set this to 0.5. I'm going to put it right here and set these to 0.2. And you can see a lot less displacement happening here. This is the basic setup for my object. So the next thing I wanted to do is add some details into this displacement. So I'm going to click on this Voronoi, hit Control Shift D, and change this to F, actually F2 and change the scale to 3. Then duplicate it again and change the bottom one to F1. I'm going to bring in a math node, change this to subtract, and just subtract these two right here. We can see the, um, the pattern we get is these thin lines that are kind of outlining the cells. Next I'm going to bring in a color ramp and put it right after this subtract node. We're going to have quite a few points here. Starting with this black one, we're going to bring this up to 0.25 then we'll bring this white down to 0.05. And then we'll change the value here, right here, so that it's 0.15, kind of a dark gray. I'm going to add another point in here. We can see it's added it in between these two points, so I'm just going to drag it away with this position and change this to 0.075. And we're going to change this to 0.15 as well, that same value. I'm going to bring in another node, or another point on this uh, color ramp, rather, change it to black. And this position is going to be 0.094. Bring in another one here, drag it over a little bit, change it to black, and this one is going to be at 0.173. Bring in another one here, drag it over to the right. This one's going to be at 0.189, and this is going to be another 0.15 value. Bring in another one here, drag it over here, and this is going to be at 208. And this is going to be another 0.15 value. I'm going to bring in another one here and uh, move this over. We're going to change this to black as well and put this at 0.225. And we're going to bring another one here that's also going to be black. It's going to go to 0.258. Change that to black. Bring in another point here. Change this to 0.273. And we're going to change this to 0.1 instead of 0.15. Bring in another one in here and put this at 0.3. This is also going to be at 0.1. Then one last point here, which is going to be black. 
change that to black. And uh, this is going to be at 0.326. So we've got all these points here. Um, let's just go over them really quick. So we've got black at 0 0.025, the 0.15 gray at 0 0.05 and 0 0.075, black at 0 0.094 and 0 0.173, the same 0.15 gray at 0.189 and 0 0.208. Then we've got black again at 0.225 and 0.258. Then we've got this darker gray, which is the 0.1 gray at 0.73 or 0.273 and 0.3. And the last one is black at 0.326. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add this to this uh, height right here. We look at that. We can look at it through this. Um, principled BSDF here, we can see it's got these little ridges now. And that's where our lights are going to go. I'm going to create another color ramp by clicking on this and hit Control shift d That way it stays attached to this subtract. And I'm going to go ahead and reset this color ramp. Change it to constant and flip it around. The white's going to stay at the bottom and this black we're going to bring down to 0 .004. So it's very close to the bottom. When we look at that, we can see this white line going through. That's going to be where one of our lights going to be. I'm going to duplicate this guy here and uh, we'll bring this black up a little bit here and this white and we'll add one more which is this black at the bottom. Change that to black and uh, so we'll put this white at 0 0.231 and this black is going to go at 0 0.251. So this is also a little strip here. We've got these two areas. These are going to be our masks for our lights. So that's our displacement here. Let's set up our texture now. So I'm going to bring in two noise textures. Just place them right here. I'm going to set this first one. The scale is going to be 30 and the detail is going to be 4. The second one, the scale is going to be 4 and detail is going to be 4. Bring in a mix RGB. Place it right here. I'm just going to run the first noise texture into the second one and into the color 2 of this mix. And then that second noise is going to color 2, going to go into color 1, pardon me of this mix. And then set this at 0.7. Let's take a look at this. Uh, we can see this nice colorful noise pattern there. I'm going to bring in a color ramp to kind of make it a bit more contrasted. I'm going to bring this black up to 0.118 and bring this white down to 0.55. I'm going to bring in a second color ramp, put it right here, and uh, we'll just use these points here but we'll rearrange them. This black one will move this up to 0.582 and this white one We'll move this to 0.682. For the colors, I'm just going to put in a hex code here so you can get the exact color that I had. This uh, first one is going to be 33241F. And this second one is going to be 666053, just like that. So you've got this reddish orangey one that's kind of dark, and then this one here that's slightly brown but also quite gray. We'll, we'll plug this into the base color. We'll see what that looks like. Now that we're fine-tuning our materials, let's uh, set up some better lighting so we can better assess what's going on. I'm going to zoom out and grab this light and just delete it. Refocus on my object. and Come over here to the World Properties tab. We're going to click this yellow circle next to Color. Click on Environment Texture and click Open and just find where you've got your HDRIs. If you don't have any, uh, check out hdrihaven.com. There's a lot of free ones there that are great. Then come here to, you know, whichever one. I'm going to choose Lakeside. That one's quite nice. Then come over here to the Settings, or pardon me, Ray Visibility, and unclick where it says Camera. Then you'll still have everything being lit up, but uh, you won't have the stuff in the background. Next, let's drag this metallic slider all the way to the right to get a bit more metallic feel to our item there. And then over here to this first color ramp, let's Control shift d not that one, this one here, Control shift d that one. And so we've got uh, just a slider here. Uh, we'll, we'll just flip this around. Set this bottom one to kind of a, a dark gray at 0.35. I guess medium dark gray. And we'll set the slider at 0.377. This black one up here, we'll change this to 0.445. We'll plug this into the roughness, see how that looks. Uh, pretty good. Um, Let's also just bring in a math node here and we'll just change this to multiply, change it to 3. 
Let's uh, duplicate this color ramp one more time. We're just going to flip these around here so that the black is on the bottom. We'll set the black to 0.318 and this medium gray this time is going to go to 0.395. I'll bring in a bump map, place it here, and just run color into the height. And we'll plug this into the normal map. And this strength is going to go down quite a lot, and it's going to go down to 0.1. So now what we've got here is a mostly metallic surface with some spots there where the roughness is a little higher and uh, where the bump is a little lower. Now we're ready to add some lights, so let's bring in some emission shaders here. I'm just going to put two, just like this. And we're going to set up this first mix by right clicking on this guy here. Or you hold down Control Shift and right click on this emission texture and drag it to this principled BSDF and it sets up this mix shader for you automatically. And I'm going to plug this first uh, mask we set up here, this middle color ramp, into this first mix shader here. Then we'll set up a second one here and we'll plug this second mask into that second one there. This first one here, I just have this as kind of an orange color. Set it up however you want. And this second one here, I uh, had it kind of a purple color. Kind of like this here. And then I had both of these strengths set to 5. So things aren't quite lining up for me. And uh, the reason is because I forgot to change a setting on these Voronoi's. You want to change these all from 3D to 2D. And once you do that, all of these lights will be in these little ridges right there. I also want to adjust one more thing too. Um, you know, this is looking way too shiny, like I can see trees in the background there. So I'm going to come over here to this black, and I'm going to move this up a tiny bit until I can't see those trees as well. 0.3 looks quite good. This is at 0.35, so it's a pretty, you know, close color ramp, but that's fine. I can adjust it later if I want to. So this already looks quite cool, but I wanted to do one more thing where I had this purple light kind of spread across my object. And to do that, I'm going to run out of generated here and bring in a mapping node. Let's just place that on this noodle, then move it over here to work with. Then I'm going to bring in a separate XYZ and place it right after here. And it's just going to come out of X as a default. If I bring in a color ramp here, I can control that gradient and have it sweep across my object. And that's a good start, but I'd prefer to just have a math node here, control it. Then I can leave my color ramp stationary and using this add, I can move that gradient across. I'm going to set this color ramp to constant and bring this white down to 0.5. Then let's set up something up here. I'm going to duplicate this emission and change the second one to black. And if we mix these two together, then we have this new mix shader here that we can plug this color ramp in here. And let's see what happens when we move this back and forth now. So now we can see that purple turning off and on. And I'm going to flip these around this is how I had it originally. So one thing I just didn't really like is the straightness of this line here. And uh, if we bring in a mix and put it right here and bring in a noise, let's just see what happens when we plug this noise into here. We can see it's kind of a straight line and the noise is here and here but it's not really affecting the curvature of this line and that's because this doesn't have a gradient. So I'm going to bring this mix off of here and duplicate this color ramp and put it here. We're going to reset this and just bring the black up to 0.3 and the white down to 0.7. And that right here is creating a gradient that we can mix our noise with. So I'm going to plug this in and now when we look at this, it's got this interesting pattern here. So this can then be used to affect this guy here and now it creates this more interesting pattern for our uh, our purple light there. You can fine tune this mapping node as well just to get the right rotation or uh, X position. I'm going to put the X location at 0.2 and the Z rotation, I'm going to change this to 90. That's how I had it set up. And this uh, add value, this is the one that we're going to animate. So I'm going to go to frame 1 here. Let's move my timeline up a little bit here. I'm currently at frame 1 as indicated right here. I'm going to hover over this guy here click on that and I think 0.41 was a good setting there. Apparently not. Well let's, let's just find what the good setting is here. So if I'm moving up 
1.25. Let's try that one. So that seems to work quite well. And let's hover over this and hit I to set a keyframe. Let's go to frame 100. I'm just going to make my animation 100 frames long. And uh, let's figure out what is completely on. So let's click through here. We're already there. So let's try point 0.2. Yep. What about point 0.3? Yep. So point 0.35. Uh, that looks pretty good. Let's try that. So I'm going to hover over here and hit I and that captures the keyframe. So the last thing you might want to do is while this is selected and your object is selected so you can see those keyframes, um, sometimes they disappear so you just have to middle mouse click and drag this around. While both of those are highlighted, I'm going to hit V and click vector and that just makes it a smooth animation because before it was going you know, uh, slow and then fast in the middle and then slow at the end with its normal animation curve. So this just changes it a little bit. So that's it. Hope you're able to follow along and you could see what I was doing and how you might change it around. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free and reach out to me. I'll see what I can do to answer your questions, clear up any confusion. Thanks for watching.